so before going to the next lecture, let me summarize what we have discussed in the last lecture, where I mentioned the problems of MOSFETs, namely short channel effects, latch up effect, radiation effect, etc., and how uh, they can be removed. Some remedies also I suggested. So, to summarize what has been discussed in the last lecture is we have discussed developments of various MOS process integration and there have been basic features of individual steps have been highlighted. Device parameters of MOSFETs are described, MOS parasitic effects were discussed and their impact on device behavior reviewed. Salicide NMOS process was presented as a way to reduce parasitic effects. Salicide process reduces the parasitic regions, so density will be improved and as well as contact resistance is also reduced because of the salicide process and a result of which the parasitic delays are reduced to a large extent. Hot electron effects were described as a remedy, LDD and lattice structures were also discussed. Various kinds of CMOS structures were presented, namely POL CMOS process, NOL CMOS process, twin tub CMOS process, etc. Finally, we discussed on CMOS latch up along with options for designing the technology to minimize this problem. With this background, we will switch over to a new topic and that topic is known as bi CMOS process technology. And let me now switch over the topic. Bi CMOS is basically the combination of bipolar device and CMOS device and that uh, combination will enhance the circuit performance because the CMOS has got certain advantages and bipolar has got some other advantages. Now people want to exploit or take advantage of advantages of both the devices, isn't it? And now let us see what are the merits of the bipolar technology or bipolar devices and what are the merits of the CMOS devices. Bi CMOS integrates both CMOS and bipolar device structures on the same chip. CMOS can offer low power and high density to a digital IC, but it is usually slower than emitter coupled logic based ICs. You know ECL is the fastest transistor BJT logic family. CMOS can offer high density and low power consumption digital circuits. So that means low power consumption, high density, the advantage of CMOS, but high speed is the advantage of ECL based IC. So we want to exploit both these properties to make a circuit, new circuit, to design a new circuit which will combine both the devices. If we combine both the devices, then comes how the process technology can be integrated so that at the same time both the devices will be fabricated. The process technology demands different requirements to improve the performance of either CMOS or bipolar devices. Now if you want to improve the bipolar device properties, then it may so happen the CMOS property will not be that high, that good performance. But at the same time if you want to improve the CMOS, very good quality CMOS transistor, so we have to sacrifice some of the 
requirements or properties of the bipolar devices. Now people are trying to optimize a process by which you can you can get good quality bipolar and CMOS both. Okay. Bipolar transistors can deliver large drive currents. It operates with small logic swings. These are advantages of bipolar transistors. It can deliver large drive currents, which CMOS cannot do. Bipolar transistors have high noise immunity. However, they exhibit high power consumption, poor density, a limited circuit option. These are the demerits of bipolar and the large drive capability working with small, operate with small logic swings and high noise immunities are the advantages of bipolar transistors. Okay. Now, by CMOS offer the benefits of both bipolar and CMOS circuits. By appropriate trading of the characteristics of each technology, speed and power can be balanced. Ultimate speed power product is a figure of merit of digital device, digital circuits, speed power product how the speed power product can be improved. This desirable result, however, is attained with the penalty of adding more process complexity. You can have a high speed power product device, which is a bicimos device or bicimos circuits can have a lot of improvement over individual bipolar circuit or individual CMOS circuit, but the penalty you have to give is more process complexity. So far, by CMOS has penetrated the application specific IC that is ASIC and very high speed is RAM market. And nowadays, you know, high speed uh, the processor elements are fabricated using by CMOS technologies. Pentium chips, recent Pentium chips are all used by CMOS technology. Now, there are two approaches. One approach is you take the CMOS technology. Now modify it to incorporate the bipolar devices. And another approach is you take the bipolar advanced bipolar process and little bit alter or modify to incorporate the CMOS. That means based on basic CMOS with modification, you can get have by CMOS process. And on the other hand, another approach is based on basic advanced bipolar process, you modify it to incorporate bipolar devices. Out of those two approaches, the first approach is popular because CMOS devices are highly popular, highly used than bipolar devices because it has got high density capability. In real ULSI or VLSI circuits are all made with CMOS transistors. So that's why we will follow the CMOS process and we will modify and we will we'll try to investigate how in a standard CMOS process the bipolar can be incorporated. One basic idea which came at the beginning a lateral lot of modification has been done on the process. Modification means by complex increasing the complexity of the process we can improve the device properties. Now, from the very beginning, I will discuss one basic CMOS process where BJT can be fabricated. So, 
we know a CMOS structure and in a CMOS structure how a bijet is fabricated that is the point of discussion now. The simplest type of bjt uses an N oil as collector, this is the N oil as collector. The PMOS source and drain as the base, this is the PMOS source and drain implant as the base and NMOS source and drain as the emitter. So these are the standard process, that is BJ, standard process means standard source and drain implant step is there, standard source and drain of NMOS step is there and OL is already formed. Now if you can make the OL as NOL already there, this is as a collector and the P plus implantation already there in CMOS process for making PMOS source and drain. So that we will use at a base and another existing process is still there NMOS source and drain that is N plus. So that we can use as emitter. So now if I use this as emitter, this as base and NOL somewhere connect and connection here you see NOL is N plus contact. This is a collector contact, this is the emitter here and base contact here. So you are getting an NPN transistor, vertical NPN transistor, clear. So we have not added an extra step. In a regular CMOS process, you can utilize the source drain implant of NMOS, the source drain implant and PMOS and N oil implant of the N, N uh, oil formation. So this, these three steps together gives one NPN transistor, but, but this NPN transistor property will not be very good. Why? Because of the base. Here you see the base is the P plus, uh, PMOS source and drain is the base, P plus. So for source and drain of PMOS, you need P plus diffusion. But for bipolar BJT, you do not need P plus. P plus is required only in the contact region, but in intrinsic region, the doping concentration is not P plus, it is a P minus and that doping level is of the order of 10 to the 17 per cc, but here it is of the order of 10 to the 21 or 10 to the 20 per cc. So because of that region, because of this region highly doped base, the gain of this transistor will not be good, will not be high. And another problem is the, the base width. Base width is this much is the base width and that base width you, you cannot reduce because you, know, you need the, the P plus source drain because you are making this along with P plus source drain. Whatever the P plus source drain depth, the same depth will be your base depth of the BJT. If you want different depth then you have to add an extra step. So that we do not want to allow. If you do not want to allow an extra step, then you have to satisfy with the inferior quality of the transistor. So typical NOL concentration is 10 to the power 16 to 10 to the power 17 per cc are same that required for BJT collector. Shallow N plus doped N MOS source drain makes a good low resistance emitter. This is a low resistance emitter you can get because this is N plus. But what is what? BJT suffers from very low gain since the base is heavily doped. Emitter doping is satisfied because the source drain of NMOS is highly doped. Collector dope is also satisfied doping level 10 to the 16 to 10 to the 17 per cc because this is uh, along with N plus contact is also there. But the problem is the base suffers from very low gain since the base is heavily doped. Now if you want to improve the property of the transistor, you can have an extra step which is a base implant step. This is now improvement over A. A is a process then B process is this one. So the, here what we did, this P plus PMOS source drain implant is not used as a base. For base we have added one extra implant that is P and the P plus region is used as a base contact, extrinsic base. So extrinsic base can be highly doped, there is no problem. But intrinsic base you can get by base implant. 
here you have lot of freedom. You can choose the dose of this implant so that doping level of the base will not be very high, will be moderate doping. At the same time, the base width can be adjusted because this is an extra step by adjusting the energy of implantation of this base implant, you can have the base width at your at your desire. So that can improve the property of the transistor, BJT transistor. That means here we are adding one extra step that is base implant step, base of BJT implant step. But here even we found some of the shortcomings. What are that shortcomings? Collector series resistance is high because we have not used any buried layer. If we do not use any buried layer, so then collector series resistance will be high. And also we have not used any deep collector which will connect the collector contact diffusion up to buried layer. So now if you want to have that buried layer, then you have to have again allow some extra complexity of adding another masking step and that is formation of the buried layer. So, in the next modified process, you can have the fabrication of the buried layer. You see N plus buried layer, buried collector has been fabricated there. To improve the BJT collector resistance, a buried layer must be added which implies that a P layer must be grown on the wafer. The NOL must drive deep enough to merge with buried layer. The NOL is driven large enough so that it will merge with buried layer. So as if this is the buried layer, this is the epitaxy, this is the deep N plus and this is the base, P plus is the base contact and the N plus is the emitter. So now this is a good BAT, NPN transistor where collector series resistance has been reduced, where the intrinsic base region can be adjusted, base region means base doping and width can be adjusted because you have added an extra base implant step. So this can have the additional advantage of reducing CMOS latch up susceptibility because, because of the presence of the buried layer. We have seen this N well region will act as a base region of the parasitic NPN transistor which I discussed in the last lecture in latch up class, in the latch up problem discussion. Isn't it? So if you use a highly doped buried layer here, so this will also reduce the CMOS latch up susceptibility. Thus, with two additional masking steps, one can add a simple moderate performance NPN device to a CMOS process flow. Okay. So this is the preliminary uh, discussion or we can say some idea how the BJT can be incorporated in a CMOS process. With the CMOS, we have added two extra masking step. One is for base, another is for buried layer. Now, I will discuss a full-fledged the bi-CMOS process which is known as 3D bi-CMOS process triple diffused. In a triple diffuse by CMOS process means there one diffusion will be for buried layer, another diffusion will be for well formation, another for source and drain diffusion. That is known as 3D or triple diffuse bipolar process that will be discussed in the next slide. The simplest way to add an NPN bipolar transistor is to use the PMOS NOL as the collector of the bipolar device, just now we discussed in the earlier diagram, and introduce an additional mask level of the P base region that we discussed in the earlier. Now, this is the 3D process. The NMOS device is built in a 15 to 10 micron thick AP layer on top of a P plus substrate. You see this is the P plus substrate, then P minus AP, intrinsic AP is formed, then how this, you see all the devices are shown here. NOL is formed for PMOS, this is the NOL. At the same time here, 
NOL is formed, this is for BJT, this NOL for PMOS, at the same time this NOL has been formed for BJT collector, this is the collector NOL. Then the, the base step, this is the P base extra step, this is a P base extra step is formed, okay. Along with P plus source and drain for the PMOS, we made P plus base contact, this P plus is made along with this combinedly, along with this, this P plus is done, the P plus base contact. Then along with this N plus source drain implant of NMOS transistor, we are making, you see the N plus emitter and N plus collector contact. They are made along with the NMOS source and drain implant. That is, that is known as merge technology. Technology is merge to make both bipolar layer and CMOS layers, CMOS active layers, okay. CMOS is built in an implanted NOL 4 to 5 micron deep. PMOS is, is this is implanted NOL, here PMOS is made. So first we took a P plus substrate then the P minus AP layer. So here the P minus on P, this is the basic substrate. Then A null formation, then P base form formation, then P plus source and drain formation, then N plus source and drain formation. And the gate or LDD etc. will be common, that will be there always. That I am not, uh, I am not discussing in this particular structure. Now the triple diffuse 3D by CMOS process ultimately looks like this, the same structure, polygates are used for both N and P channel device, this is a polysilicon gate here NMOS and PMOS, polysilicon gates are used there, P plus substrate here this one is used to reduce latch up susceptibility by providing a low, temp low temperature current path through a vertical PNP parasitic device, this is the P plus substrate that doping level will reduce the latch up susceptibility. P type base region of the bipolar device is 1 micron, this one, this is the P plus base, this region is 1 micron deep with a doping level of 1 into 10 to the 17 plus cc. Many of the processing steps can be shared between the MOS and bipolar devices. That is sharing, you see, P plus base contact is shared with the P MOS source and drain implant. N plus emitter and N plus collector contact are shared with N MOS source and drain implant. N OL is shared with BJT collector. So this is the sharing business. Now N plus source and drain doping step is used for emitter and collector contact of the bipolar structure. P plus source and drain implant is same as that used for P plus base contact, so P plus base contact, okay. So this is the, the process sequences of triple diffuse 3D by CMOS process. But in this particular structure, one problem is the standard substrate used for bipolar devices is N on P substrate. P is the substrate, N is the epitaxial layer and before N epitaxial layer deposition we form the buried layer, N plus and P plus buried layers. So these buried layers are missing here in this 3D bisimus process. So now to incorporate these buried layer to reduce collector series resistance, we use we modify the process, 3D process and we use SBC process that is standard buried collector process that is known as the SBC by CMOS process, standard buried collector SBC by CMOS process. Why this particular bias, SBC by CMOS process is evolved? Because 3D by CMOS suffers from a high collector resistance due to use of lightly doped NOL as collector. Now this is the complete 
structure of this SBC bisimus process. Here P substrate and NAP, you see NAP axial layer. Then we form the P well and here also form P well, this channel stop below the field oxide, you can make a channel stop Im implant that can, this P well implant same can be used here. Then this is the N plus buried layer, this is the NAP, that is for P type, uh, sorry, for PMOS transistor and this NAP can be used for BJT collector also. This structure is common, is known, isn't it? This is the BJT you see, the buried layer, then NAP, then this is the P base, P base, region, P minus base, then N plus is the emitter, this is the P plus is the contact, base contact, extensive base contact, this is the N plus collector, deep contact here. So this is the, this structure of BJT will give you good properties of BJT. All, are, all steps are there, buried layer, deep collector to reduce collector series strength, base contact, the extrinsic base region is also there, the emitter highly doped region is there, P minus base is also there. So now that has been the same, um, most of the steps except the P and the buried layer are made along with this NMOS and CMOS processes. SBC by CMOS process uses a buried N plus layer under the N well. Under the N well, this is the N well, this is N well for PMOS formation. Below that, we have used the N plus buried layer. Buried N plus layer is first formed in P substrate by arsenic implant and capped with 2 micron thick AP layer. P substrate is taken, buried layers are formed, then epitaxial deposition is done, that is for 2 micron thick AP layer growth. N plus buried layer not only reduces collector resistances, but also reduces the susceptibility to latch up, because buried layer also has got advantage for latch up prevention. POL for NMOS device and intrinsic base for BJT are fabricated in thin AP layer whose resistivity is chosen typically as 1 ohm centimeter. Collector resistance is further reduced by adding a deep N plus connection to N plus buried layer with an additional mask, that is a deep collector diffusion. You you can use an additional mask which is deep collector diffusion, so by which you can reduce the collector series resistance drastically. P oil step is used for NMOS and junction isolation structure of BJT. Because along with the P oil formation, you can have the isolation diffusion which is just below the field oxide. I have shown you in the, uh, in the diagram that you can have this isolation diffusion, P plus, because that is top will be the, uh, the locus oxide, field oxide, and below that is a P plus diffusion which is done along with the P oil step and which will reduce the, the uh, isolation problem, we, which will increase the isolation problem rather the the BJTs will be isolated just like the pin junction isolation. Next is, thus with two added mass levels, SBC by CMOS reduces both collector resistance and also CMOS latch up susceptibility. With two added mask, one is the collector series resistance that is buried layer, another is that will uh, and also deep collector. Okay, now in the in the this uh, I was talking about this POL. You see, this is NAP and this POL is isolation diffusion. This is isolation diffusion here. 
and here also in this side also below that oxide you can have this PUL along with this PUL formation, isn't it? And that is basically top will be the low cost, that thickness is not large so that the oxide cannot, may not reach up to this. So below that if you P, so the NAP and P will be reverse bias, so you, have, you will be getting junction isolation, isn't it? So now this is the SBC process, now twin OL by CMOS process. Another bicimos process I want to discuss now that is twin well bicimos process. Earlier bicimos processes suffer from low packing density due to P minus substrate doping level a large spacing between collectors to prevent punch through. That was the problem so with earlier bicimos processes. A raising doping level would increase collected to substrate capacitance. Here what happens you see the doping level you are using P minus substrate so because of that the uh, between collector to another collector you have to have large space because the collector and substrate is reverse bias and because of this reverse bias the if, if the collectors are very nearly located, so there is a chance of punch through. In order to prevent that punch through, the collectors are located not, not a, a, at a close distance. You have to allow some space between the collectors and that will obviously uh, reduce the packing density at the same time if you want to if you want to the, uh, reduce that uh, punch through effect and that can be done by increasing the uh, the doping level of the substrate but if you increase the doping level that will increase the collector to substrate capacity so p type ap layer is to be counter doped to form pnol regions pmos which cause the process control difficulties. Twin oil bicimos process improves bipolar packing density by self -align, aligning buried P layer to the buried N plus region at the cost of higher collector to substrate capacitance. This you can achieve by twin oil bicimos process. Bipolar packing density can be improved by using self aligning buried P layer to the buried N plus region at the cost of higher collected to substrate capacity. So that is the basic uh, difference of the twin oil by CMOS process over the POL or N oil by CMOS process, SBC process or 3D process. Now I will show you the diagram of twin oil by CMOS process flow. So here are the steps starting wafer P minus 10 ohm centimeter, this is the P substrate, starting wafer this one. Next is growth of oxide pad, this is the oxide pad, you look here and nitride layer, so oxide nitride, composite layer, you grow everywhere on the substrate. Next what you do, photo masking of N plus buried layer, so photo masking means you are opening window for buried layer region, here and here is the windows for buried layer region, you are open and then antimony is antimony is implanted here and here. So after antimony implantation then anneal at 12 50 degree centigrade to form defect free N plus buried layer. SB implant and anneal at 250 degree centigrade to form defect free N plus buried layer that is defect free N plus buried layer. In situ growth of thick oxide over buried layer taking place. Here at the same time the over buried layer when this the implanted layer goes down at the same time oxide will grow, thick oxide that is in situ growth at the same time of the drive-in process. Okay. Thick oxide serves as blocking mask for the cell paline boron buried P layer implant. Now you see 
after this step without any photo masking process you can directly implant boron and if you implant directly boron through this layer that is the pad oxide layer after this oxide is grown that means thick oxide is grown you remove nitride layer after removing nitride layer the structure of the device looks like this nitride layer has been removed here thick oxide has been grown and now thin oxide is this region this one this is the pad region pad oxide basically on the pad oxide region now you implant boron to the thin layer of pad oxide boron will be implanted and it will reach in the substrate here and here okay so now after reaching boron here and here so you are having automatically here boron implantation is done here and here so automatically you will be getting the p well region after getting the p well all oxides are removed the surface this is a p plus buried layer the p and here boron implant gives <coughs> gives the p isolation this on this will act as a p a buried layer to buried layer in between p will give you the channel stopper implant basically p substrate this is a channel stopper this is buried layer this is a buried layer and uh, this is self aligned p buried layer this is n plus buried layer okay so this p buried layer after that you remove all oxide then hclh for native oxide removal and 1 to 1.5 micron thick nap is grown this is intrinsic ap with a resistivity of more than 15 ohm centimeter more than 15 ohm centimeter okay next step is growth of second pad oxide after ap layer is formed then growth second pad oxide and nitride layer and photo masking of in oil region now we have to form in oil okay next step is phosphorus implant for in oil and growth of 350 nanometer oxide over in oil so this is this is the in oil here you see this region is is the drive in it gone here stripping of the nitride from the pol and self align to pol implantation the next step pol drive in at 1000 degree centigrade with oxide cap it remove all oxide and grow hard pad si2 si3 and 4 layer remove all oxide and grow third pad si2 si3 and 4 layer okay next step is define active areas normal low cost thymus process follows after that there is n oil and p oil has been formed this p region has been formed n plus buried layer p buried layer has been formed so that means all the regions are defined for good quality bjt and good quality thymus means both n mos and p mos and rest process the low cost thymus process follows and ultimately the twin oil bisimos process gives this structure standard n mos this is the p mos implant to set mos device threshold pattern contact plug and high dose phosphorus implant for n pin collector form gate oxide and deposit n plus poly layer then form electrodes for mos and polysilicon emitter contacted bjt 
So polysilicon emitter contacted BJT is there, P plus extrinsic base is there, this is the base region, N plus collector, this is the buried layer, this is the N well, will act as an epitaxy, similar to epitaxy layer here. So now this is the P well along with this here been formed. Okay, this is the N well, here you form the P MOS, the P well, here you form the N MOS, the oxide is a polysilicon, on oxide polysilicon is there for gate, then the polyometer is formed here, after that you open contact and then metallization follows. This is a, this completes two M noel by CMOS process. Okay. So, after this twin well bisimus process, now people try to incorporate again some extra steps. The objective is to improve the speed property as well as a high density. These are advances and they are automatically you know, the ad one of the advancement is use of silicide, salicide process then automatically self aligned process you can incorporate incorporate and if you incorporate self aligned contact for silicide so their mass threshold voltage you can further improve at the same time your uh, the uh, contact resistance at the source then will reduce which will increase the speed and contact resistivity also will reduce because of the silicide the next improvement can be done by using the strange isolation, strange isolation, side wall, base contact, etc. These are all improvements. You can incorporate one by one, your process complexity will further increase. So, two such process, high performance twin well submicron by CMOS process, I will show you. So, this is one. And here features are namely double level metal interconnect, this is one level and this is another level, metal one level is here, metal two level is here, local interconnect without need for contact holes and metal borders. Salicide process in which gates, emitters and diffusions are silicides in a self-aligned manner to reduce seed resistance, self-aligned P plus extrinsic base. So these are the features of this high performance twin oil submicron by CMOS process. Over the earlier twin oil by CMOS process, these are the extra features of this advanced high performance twin oil submicron by CMOS. layer in buried layer here is the you see here LDD has been used because you see drain is a is that this gradient is there drain drain side so here also you have used LDD structure LDD structure okay in another advanced twin well submicron by CMOS process I will show the structure where Trend isolation has been used. This is this one. You see here trench isolation has been used. Two level metals are there. And now the features of this particular structure is like this. First is you can see the trench isolation, self aligned silicided gates. Emitters for low seat resistance, that is polyemitter, self aligned salicided gates and emitters for low seat resistance, LDD, NMOS and PMOS structures, this is the LDD structure has been used here you see, double level metal interconnect. These are the features of this particular 
high performance submicron trench isolated by CMOS. Okay. <coughs> day by day more advanced by CMOS processors are coming and you can see <laughs> from the uh, the POL by CMOS to NOL to twin OL by CMOS and then came this advanced by CMOS, the process complexity is going up day by day. And now I will summarize and conclude the by CMOS. The strengths and weakness in bipolar and MOS devices and circuits have long been known. But although strengths are known, people could not combine both bipolar and MOS technologies because that time the, the sharing of the technology was not possible. And nowadays one of the achievements has came up by this time that is the selective epitax. By selective epitax you see P, selective epitax you can have P selective epitax C and selective epitax C, NOL and POL separate. So that can be done in one state uh, in separate region. Selective epitaxy was not discovered earlier. So that time it could not be used. So now that can be incorporated in bicimos process. Bipolar circuits cannot be operated at current lower than one microampere. Past transistors are not available and erasable reprogrammable memories cannot be made. MOS circuit cannot work at low voltage swing and have low transconductance. Although bipolar devices have long been eclipsed by CMOS technology, bipolar and CMOS technology have now been merged to form by CMOS technology. Judicially merging has been done bipolar and CMOS technology to have by CMOS technology which can produce high performance bipolar device and high performance CMOS device. Several by CMOS process technology have been discussed. Substantial improvements in circuit performance can be obtained to proper technology mixing by making use of complementary character of bipolar and MOS circuits by transfer of device and circuit concept often by using parasitic transistors. Sometimes parasitic transistors are also exploited in your circuit. That is the innovation, circuit innovation. Bicimos will hold its own in ASICs, DSP, combined analog digital circuits. These are all emerging areas, ASICs, DSP and combined analog digital circuits. First memories and components of, for high speed optical communications are sure to benefit most from exploitation of by CMOS. This, is, this will be the future conclusion. First memories and components for a high speed optical communications are sure to benefit, benefit most from exploitation of by CMOS. With this, I conclude my lecture on by CMOS process technology. Thank you.